So, hi everybody. This is Felicia here with Mommy Needs a Minute, coffee break number one. I said yesterday that I was going to get this series on the roll. So, the whole plan of the series is to, every week, give some mommy insight on different things that are going on and, hey, get together with the mommy community and see how we can uh, help one another out. So, the whole point of this video is mommy self-care. Because as mothers, we are tired, we are exhausted, and we are overly stressed. Um, most of our time is being superwoman for the entire family, and most of the time our own self-care is forgotten about. So, we, in turn, are the cleaner, the cook, the tutor, the nurse. The referee between multiple children, the inventor, and the homework hero, among other things that it is our job to do as a mom. But no one truly understands a mom's job unless another mom. So, recently when I read an article, it read that, logically speaking, if you really want to go there, um, we spend anywhere from 168 hours every two weeks plus. Um, being a mom, not including working full-time jobs or other things that we have to do along those matters. Because when we signed up in order to enjoy the life that is a miracle of having children, we signed up for 24-7. Their thing is, is we are overworked and underpaid. Um, it's one of the most rewarding jobs that you can have, but at the same time, we don't get paid for it. So it's also one of the biggest ones where we spend... A lot of our ambition and a lot of our perseverance and our intuitiveness to being the best moms that we can be. So because of this, um, and where I'm still fairly new to this whole vlogging thing, I decided that this is one of the series that I will do. Because one, I quite enjoy my Tim Hortons coffee because I am Canadian. And as a mom of three children, I thought this would be something fun to do. Um, to get moms on board and just get their opinion and see what they're doing with their lives and see how we can help one another. So the whole point of this mommy self-care video is that I have about 11 tips and tricks that I know myself personally would probably work. So I'm going to pass them on to you and if they work for you, well then you can send me a comment or subscribe or add any additional ones in that you want to add in. So grab your coffee, your tea, your glass of wine, or hell, your shot of whiskey, and uh, join me for this conversation. So first one's first. Um, if you enjoy journaling or writing things down, um, I actually own what they call a rage journal. Um, because I write about things that basically they tick me off. They make me irritable. Um, if I'm having a bad day, I write about it. So then that way I can get my feelings out on paper. Now, before this whole virus thing started, it might have been a little bit easier because you might have been able to get out to your bestie and, you know, ring in her ear or, you know, go see your mental health worker if that's what you needed to do. But that makes it a little difficult now because we're really confined to how many people we're allowed to be around at once. So that's why I suggest this is a really good thing to do is to get that piece of paper out, get that journal out, get the diary out, write down what's ticking you off, write down why this afternoon you're in a corner crying, curled up in a ball and shaking, write down why you feel like you're going to pull your hair out, um, or overall just what's irritating you about this virus in general. Another big one for me is music. So I know that there's sometimes that I'll listen to a song and give me goosebumps, or I'll just want to get up and I'll want to dance and I want to sing to it. But music is a really good stress reliever, especially if you can resonate with music. So put on that old school playlist, whether it's your high school playlist or, you know, from the 80s or the 90s. For us, X generation, um, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, and do what uplifts you. Put the music on that uplifts you. Put the music on that, you know, makes you, gives you those fluffy feelings and those um, fuzzy feelings and just get up and dance your heart out. 
And hey, the kids might join us, so, you know, it might be a dance party. So, here's another one, too, that I thought was an interesting idea. Um, write a letter. You know, we, even to just someone that you know locally. Like, you can't really get out and do a lot of things where we're even able to provide people... I know I'm big for this, but um, we can't even really do a lot of the whole love languages, if you're familiar with that. And being an extrovert, one of my love languages is being able to, you know, give somebody a hug or to, you know, just be in their space and let them know that I care. But that's unfortunate right now because that's not something that you can do. So being someone's pen pal, even if it's a close friend of yours saying, hey, I'm going to write you a letter. And then, you know, one it kind of allows you to write things down again, which will help relieve some of your stresses. But two, the other person that's receiving that is also receiving an upbeat letter from one of their buddies. That's not something that's disappointing in the mail. So my fourth one is make yourself that drink, whether it's coffee with like 40 espresso shots or a tea with no sugar or that shot of rum that doesn't actually have any mix. Do whatever you want to do. And the thing is, is that even if you have to lock yourself in the closet for 15 minutes in order to get that space to drink your coffee and actually savor the flavor, do it. It'll do you all the better and it'll do you all the good. Um, Spend an hour with a close friend. The only problem with this is, is like I said earlier, is that it's a little hard to do that. Um, Me and my close friends would go for a drive, go find a boardwalk, go for a walk and just walk around for hours and hours and just talk about life and the world and random stuff. But that's a little hard to do now. So our best way to do that is through FaceTime or through messenger video or to actually pick up the phone and make a phone call. But the thing is nowadays is where everyone is so run by media and technology, it makes it really difficult when you're having a conversation with someone, whether it's through text message or on Facebook Messenger, to really understand the context of the way that person is coming through. Um, Because basically, media and technology has desensitized us to those things. Um, It's not going to hurt you and it's not going to hurt your other person to pick up the phone and actually have a conversation. Um, you know, pick up a coloring book. Coloring is not just for kids. It's for adults too. I see, I've, over the years, I've seen many's and many's of adult coloring books come out. Um, frankly, I actually make my own coloring books. Um, I've done it for a couple different places. So if coloring pages, adult coloring pages is something you're interested in, get at me. I'll send you a couple. Especially if it will help. Seven, make a fort. Find all the blankets and the cardboard in your house and make a fort. Um, the great thing about this is that the kids can get in on this and you guys can use all the duct tape in the house or, you know, I don't know, wrap it up with twine or if you really have the extra, tie it together with toilet paper. I don't know, but make the fort. Um, it'll help you guys out significantly. It will give you that time, that nice relaxing time, pop some popcorn, sit down, watch a movie with the kids in the fort. Or, hey, once the kids have gone to bed, you can actually get that much-needed time of reading a book in a nice, relaxing spot. Number eight, write a list down. You've heard of the whole idea of honey-do list. Well, write a list down of the things that are irritating you um, and the things that are bothering you, specifically with the coronavirus, or the things that are specifically bothering you about the fact that Now, not only on top of everything else you have to do with being a mom, you have to kind of be a teacher too because you're probably worried about the fact that now your kids are out of school for months in advance from what they were supposed to. So now you got to try to figure out educational activities for them to do. Um, So write down how that frustrates you or how that ticks you off. Um, It will be helpful. Go for a walk. Yes, you can't go into any parks or any trails at the moment. Um, But even if you have to take a walk down your street, and hey, if you live on a cul-de-sac, you can kind of do a couple rounds. May not necessarily be to the same extent that you're used to, but it will still get you out of the house so you're not screaming at four walls. Ten. This is a big one. As moms... We don't let ourselves be emotional because we are one of the biggest rocks that our families have. 
it is our job to be strong for our kids. It is our job to be strong for our partners or our spouses. Um, we have to hold down the fort. So therefore, you know, we don't basically give ourselves the opportunity to be emotional. And the biggest part about this is I'm saying is that it is okay to not be okay. It is okay to cry out your frustrations. It is okay to not be okay with what's going on right now. Um, if you don't want to just up and do it, get yourself a blanket, sit down with the kids for a movie, put on a movie that's going to make you cry. And if they ask you, just tell them, Hey, the movie makes me upset. So then that way you don't feel like you have to explain to them why you're upset. I know a few of my tearjerker movies I've always liked was, um, my sister's keeper, the help. And there's among a, quite a bit of other ones I can't think of offhand, but those are two of the ones that I quite enjoy. Um, but embrace yourself. Embrace your emotions. You're a human being. Eleven, do a single tiny thing. You know that crap drawer you've been dreading going through? Or that closet that desperately needs to be organized? Or, hey, your fridge hasn't been cleaned out in the last month? Do it may not be something that you want to do, but do it. Because even after it's done, no matter how hard it was for you to do it because you didn't want to do it in the first place, it will give you some sense of accomplishment once everything's said and done. So as far as these tips go, these are a few things that I thought as a mom and being stuck in these four walls would be a really great way in order to help other moms release some of the stresses that they actually are enduring at the moment. Um, so my suggestion to you is to try some of these things because we need rest too. We need to relax, but we also need to be happy. Our children don't need to see us as mombies. We cannot be mombies, especially in a time like this where this virus is going around. We need to be at our best optimum, optimum selves. So... Again, if you like this video or you think, you know, it triggered some things for you to do, like, comment, or subscribe for me and then you'll find out when I get any other videos. I do intend on making these videos every Wednesday evening um, and coming up as of Saturday evenings, I'll be doing a Create With Me. So come back to my channel and check out that one because this Saturday we have a very unique Recycle Reuse project that we're going to be doing. Um, have your toilet paper rolls ready. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.